Well, I think in the long term, we'll find some way, the Iraqis will find some way to take Ramadi back, but it may involve using Shia militias that we would rather not see empowered. National security analyst Michael O'Hanlon discussing what needs to be done for the Iraqis to regain control of Ramadi. Welcome back to Newsmax Prime. J.D. Hayworth joined now by Miranda Khan on the anchor desk. Yeah, J.D., the fight to take down ISIS suffered a major setback when Ramadi fell, but Iran's plan to retake the city could lead to some bigger issues. According to reports, Iran is backing Shia militias in an effort to retake that city, but that plan may prove difficult given the tumultuous history between Shia and Sunni Muslims. Also joining us now, professor and Middle Eastern expert, Dr. Robert Rubiel. Robert, it's so good to have you back on Newsmax Thank you for Prime. having me, uh, Congressman, and thank you for having me, Ms. Khan. It's always a pleasure to be here. Robert, I think that sometimes we have to go back to basics. Yes. And that is the longtime sectarian strife between the Sunnis and the Shia. Could you encapsulate that for us? Well, here you have more than one problem. You have historical, theological problem, and now you have geostrategic problems. On the historical, theological problems, the Shia espouse certain doctrine that they are not shared by the Sunni who, are, who consider themselves the orthodox of the Muslims. Now, what you have, you have now really rivalry, competition. You don't have a regional order now in the Middle East. And Iraq and Syria now, you have a contest. Contest by ISIS, but also contest by Turkey, by Saudi Arabia, and by the government of Syria and Iraq to decide the new parameter of this new regional order. So this is what we are seeing now. We are seeing sectarian conflict, and on top of that sectarian conflict, we are seeing geostrategic consideration pursued by different countries that how it happened, one is led by a Sunni country, Saudi Arabia, and the other is led by a Shia country, which is Iran. And this is what's making it extremely difficult in that area, and ISIS is exploiting that void, exploiting that rivalry, exploiting this sectarian conflict that goes back to uh, a lot of uh, history. Yeah, and you heard, we, we heard just a moment ago, that people are very concerned about having Shia militias try to help the U.S. to regain Ramadi. That basically, some people have described it, that's like trying to put out fire with gasoline. Yes. And is that a valid concern? It's a very valid concern, but also we have to examine what's happening on the grounds. I think myself that the Iraqi government now cannot go ahead and retake Ramadi or Al-Anbar province, why today they launched a huge campaign to retake it without certain help from the Iraqi Shia and, of course, without help from United States. So now here the Iraqi government is in a double bind mm -hmm. and its position now how to balance its cooperation with United States with how it's going to handle the Iraqi Shia militia. And there are some things that happen extremely important why I am extremely worried and I didn't hear it, you know, in most in most news. The operation's code name, it's called Labbaik al Hussein. Mainly, we are ready to obey you for battle, Hussein. Hussein is a central figure in the Shia. So, already now, yes, I'll go to you and I'll say I am extremely worried because the campaign now has taken a sectarian character and should have been Labbaik Iraq. We are ready to go ahead and save Iraq, not save, you know, Hussein or go back to the sectarian, you know, issues between the two. So, in the name of the operation, Yes. This sectarianism has lifted its head in, in a dangerous way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was extremely upset because this is now a kind of an opportunity if the Iraqi government is going to go there. Why they want to say Labbaika Hussein? They should say Labbaika, we are ready to go and save Iraq. Labbaika Iraq, not Labbaika Hussein. How confident are you that the Iraqi people will be able to get, regain control of Ramadi? Well, I think if they cooperate well, especially with the United States, and it's key, if you don't have that cooperation, if they don't heed what the United States is telling them, it really is going to be disastrous. And already we have seen from the beginning why the sectarian code name to go ahead and liberate Ramadi and then Al Anbar. Let me move off the battlefield to a, to a more general question, Please, Robert, and that is that every day there are calls for moderate Muslims to come out and speak up and stand up against extremism, specifically ISIS, but they don't. Why not? 
you have to, to listen from your leader and from your religious establishment. Here I can say that whether the Wahhabi or Al-Azhar or the leaders of Egypt or the leader of Saudi Arabia, they say, well, ISIS is bad, ISIS is not Islam. But then in their discourse, Somehow they blame the West for many things that's happening in the Middle East and the Grand Middle East. They cannot do that implicitly or explicitly to justify anything. The West is not at the root causes of what's happening in the Middle East. This is the first thing. So their message is mixed. So how the people they're going to respond if the message is mixed? Second and most importantly, you know, you have certain ideological tenets that overlap between Wahhabism, Salafism and ISIS. So you have to deal also with the root causes. And third, you have the spotlight, what I say, the spotlight. People, really, some Muslims, they do speak out, but their voices are muffled. They don't want to be in the spotlight. Fair enough. You have spoken out loudly and clearly about the competing interests. Dr. Robert Rabiel, we always appreciate your insights. And Newsmax Prime continues.